the screen. Okay. Okay, so today I'm going to, it is recording, right? Uh, let me see. Let me check one more time. Yes, it's recording. Okay, so I'll use this for to update the, uh, the, the old videos. Share. All right, let's go. Tutorial one. Now, uh, the names are here and there. So you can see here the name is Computing Application for Engineers. And then um, we have a few questions. Question one, two, three, four, and five, and six. Okay, four, five, and six. Some of these are one tail test, some of them are two tail tests. Always note first that all my questions in the exam or in the uh, assignments, assessment, they are all two tail tests. So let's discuss why I prefer to use two tail tests instead of one tail test. Okay, in the first question, question one. Okay, let's read this. Now, this question uh, is regarding uh, Z test. Okay, so let's see. Uh, a vendor, A vendor is a, a vendor, a vendor submits lots of fabric to a textile manufacturer. The manufacturer wants to know if the lot average breaking strength exceeds 200 PSI. Okay, exceeds 200 PSI. So let me highlight this one. So this vendor a uh, 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 company submits a uh, fabric. Oh, I can Okay, textile manufacturer. All right, nice. Now the manufacturer wants to know. So this is the factory. He uh he wants to know that if this fabrics that he received or she received, I think yes, it's a she. She received exceeds two hundred psi. Okay, so maybe uh, the fabric that uh, she wants to use requires some strength, uh, maybe some special uh, special purpose uh, clothing, uh, like PPE and such. So the requirement is exceeding 200 PSI, right? Exceeding 200 PSI. So if so, if it exceeds 200 PSI, right, uh, she will accept the, uh, the, uh, the fabric that is sent to the company lah. Right? If it's not, then you will reject it and maybe return it and ask them to uh, send a new one. Okay, so past experience indicates that a reasonable value for variance is 100 psi squared. So this is variance. So let me clear all this. Right? So you see here, this is the variance, right? And the variance is 100 psi. And this is squared because the unit is squared because of the variance, variance is a sigma square, right? So it's 100 psi. So if it's a standard deviation, then it is a 10 psi, okay? Hypothesis is shown as this one. Now let's talk about the why this is a Z test. So always remember, I know that this is, uh, this is not always true, but for the sake of exams or assessment, we give you the I, I, I give you the variance or standard deviation, and therefore you know that this is a uh, 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 Z test. Okay, look at the hypothesis. Hypothesis is not as the same as your uh, your usual hypothesis, right? Okay, let's see. Okay, so now I'm showing you my phone screen. So before that, I need to switch on the moon. Okay. Okay, good. So I hope you can see this. Let me switch on this one. Okay, now our usual hypothesis was H0. Let's do it. H0, H1, right? Mu1 equals to mu2, mu1 not equal to 
Newton. All right. So in this case, it gives you this. H0 is e, uh, mu equals to 200, and H1 is mu uh, more than 200. Now, this is a case of one tail test because your mu is, is known already. So uh, you want that all this fabric to have uh, uh, 200 PSI, uh, and then you want it to be more than 200 PSI. Okay, the original hypothesis uh, uh, zero and hypothesis one is where you don't know what are the mu's, or you know what the mu's are, the average, not the mu, mu, you know what the mu's are, but you don't uh, really know where does it lies. Does is mu one on left, mu two on right, or mu two on the left, mu one on the right, right? So you don't know where it comes from in the statistic distribution, uh, sorry, in the uh, normal distribution uh, chart. In this case, you know what is the mean already. The mean is 200 PSI. Okay, because you want the lot to have 200 PSI and above. And therefore, you see that it is mu is 200 and H1 is mu more than 200. So if you draw a graph previously, it will be something like this, right? And then another color. Uh, maybe we superimpose like that. Okay, to... Uh, graph superimposed together. In this case, it's not because you know what is the mean, the original mean. So this time around, it's just one graph, right? Just one graph. Okay, then you just draw this one first, change to blue color, and the mean is known as 200. I don't you put the unit there, right? And then you can see that alternative hypothesis is more than 200. And therefore, let's take a yellow highlight is somewhere here. Okay, we want the fabric to have or to be more than 200 PSI, not less. So if it's not less, then the graph will always be looked at on the right side only. And this is why it is called a one tail test because the other tail is canceled. Okay, because the other tail, the tail is canceled. Now, in the exam, I don't do this. Right, I, don't, I just have two graphs because, because we want uh, it to uh, have a range. And we also want to know where does it lies from left and right. Okay, so let's go back to the question. Now we know that this is a Z test, number one. We know what, are, what the hypotheses are. Right, and next we go to here. It's also set there. Lah. It is a one side alternative hypothesis. Okay. So we would accept is then uh, we would accept in the lot uh, H zero is rejected, or you can also say we will accept the lot if H one is accepted. Now, uh, next paragraph: the four specimens are randomly selected, and the average breaking strength observed is Y bar, which is the average equals to two hundred and fourteen psi. Technically, it is more than two hundred. You can accept the lot lah. But if you want to use a statistic analysis, you should put the equation there. As you can see, the equation is y bar minus mu naught divided by only one sigma and only one n. Because you are not comparing it with any two groups of samples, even though it is a z test, even though it is a t test. Since this is a one tail test, you only have the y bar only one minus the known mu, which is 200 psi, right? And then down there is your only one variant, and here is not a variant. Here is a significant as uh, standard deviation. That's why it's just ten, and you only have four samples, so it's the square root of four. Now let's talk about these numbers of sample. The numbers of sample here is uh, four only. Now four technically is not considered to be z test, right? It's just a very small sample. So why does this engineer or uh, this lady just say four samples are enough. Uh, when 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 they um, uh, when she took these four samples with a known previous data, so she say four samples is more than enough because maybe every day, every single time that the uh, fabric company comes and bring the fabric into the factory, it is always uh, more than two hundred psi. Uh, so, by her instinct 
on her experience. She just took four and assume it to be Z test. You can see here that is important. Yeah? Z test is not really a population, uh, hundred percent. It is a population as as if you see fit. Uh, for for specimen compared to the previous known data, like hundreds and millions of similar data, and always the same. So you can consider it to be a Z test. Maybe once a while you have some anomalies. Uh, uh, maybe the fabric that you uh, received on some day in September, right? Uh, it comes in batches. Like somehow the one that you pick, the four that you pick randomly is 216. Not this one. Uh. Let's say, uh, thought experiment, 216. But accidentally, that samples that you choose are the only one which is more than 200 psi. But the rest of the uh, cut crates or whichever the fabric comes from, they are less than 200 psi. Okay? So these are the things that statistics cannot really answer because you only take random samples of small number of samples based on your instinct. Right? If it's engineering, then you need to do sample for each of the fabric that come in, which is a hassle, right? However, uh, when the, let's say the scenario that I'm talking about just, uh, just now is the rest of the, uh, the samples are less than 200%. So what is she doing now is type, I forgot the type one or type two error, which is she is choosing something that uh, she should not. And maybe another, another is that uh, error is she is rejecting something that she should not have. Okay. Uh, so maybe once a while, anomalies will come, uh, issues will come now. Right, that's why you have some um, uh, manufacturing process which is not uh, perfect, right? So like defects. Okay. All right. Now here is what is the next alpha is five percent or zero point zero five. Since this is zero point zero five, so when we refer to the table, do I have the table here? From the statistic table. Okay. Let's go to Z test. Z section. So the first page is the Z section. The second page is the T section. The rest, this for our uh, next week. And over, okay, next week. Okay, let's go for Z test. Okay, since so this is a 5% alpha and only one tail test, right? One tail test. Okay, this is not two tail test. Remember in your Z distribution, if it's a two tail test, your alpha need to be divided by two. And therefore, it is the first one there. The will limit right tail 5%. Look at the screen, which is Z borderline is 1.645. However, this question is one tail test and 5% um, alpha. And therefore, that is the one that we can choose. One, six, four, five. The same, yeah? The same, because of the nature of one tail test. Okay, you can see that 1.645. And your number here, your Z0. So whatever I say Z0 is the Z calculation. So you have a Z test, Z0. So Z0 is the one that you're going to refer from the table. So here is 2, sorry, 2.80. So if we can draw a chart. E is a one tail test. This is... 1.645 and our number was negative positive 2.80 right so 2.80 should lie somewhere after 1.645 that's why it is bigger so when it is bigger so i write there rejected so please i just write here rejected because i know some of you will copy this this is not the way to write it down so you should write first uh, what kind of rejected or rejected case zero? Okay, can we can also have accept case one? Also got mark, but the perfect mark this should be half mark. A perfect mark usually this is just one mark. You should add in afterwards that you should write that the fabric fabrics are exceeding. 
200 Yesan Saya Saya juga full mark sih Full mark of one mark lah Okay Now That's it So the next one is the p-value So again P-value I'm not gonna uh, Ask in the exam Okay But Let's talk about the p-value here So you say this is type one error, right? That's it. If a type one error alpha is specified, we find z alpha z 0.05 to be 1.645 from the appendix table one. The p value computed uh, using the upper tail is uh, that you can see one uh, one minus 0.9 and 0.744. So let me check this one. Uh, what was it again? Zero and nine nine seven four four. So if we can go back to the statistic table, to uh two point eight right. So it is here. Sorry, let me see. Sorry, two point eight. What was it again? Ah, I have short term memory. Two point eight. So not that one. This one. Two point eight. So your number is zero point nine and seven four. So one belongs to a hundred. So one minus this number, zero. Ah, uh, that number, zero point nine nine seven four. So let's go back to the question. Okay, it's zero point zero. Two five six. Now zero point zero two five six. You can see that p, which is zero point zero two five six, is less than zero point zero five, which is the one that we have chosen just now, right? So it's a smaller number, then therefore the null hypothesis is rejected. So if the p is larger than our alpha, then uh, 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 null hypothesis is going to be accepted. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, let's check. I see one question in the chat room. Oh, I can make it smaller. Okay, nice. Okay. Sorry, sir. How to determine the 1.645 again? Okay. Okay, to determine 1.645 again, look at the question. This is alpha 5%. Where is it? Here. Is it 5%? Yes, it is. 0.05 is 5%. Okay. Sometimes alpha can be 5%, 10%, 1%. But I can just write alpha is uh, 0.1, 0.05, 0.01. Okay. Uh, good. Okay, now you got it. Okay. Any other question? You can just... Uh, right in the chat room. Okay. Any other question, Nora? Okay, Cheng Li says, but I don't get why to 0 0.9974. Okay. Now, what was our Z0 just now? 2.8. Remember, Z0 is 2.8. Uh, wait, uh, I have, I'm confused now. So Ching Li asked, but I don't get it. And then suddenly you say, say you, can you continue explain, explain which one? Uh, so I'm not clear about that question. Lewis asked, why to 0 0.997, So our Z0 was, again, yeah, 2.8. See, Z0 is 2.8. Now with this, go back to the, uh, formula, uh, sorry, statistic, statistic table, and refer to the Z uh, page, Z score table. We can see here, we have Z here, Z, this one, right? And we have uh, points here and points there. So the first 
uh, the first two numbers to be on the column. Okay, maybe I didn't explain this one. So it was 2.8. Scroll down and you have 2.8 there. Okay, since it's just 2.80, so the next column should be zero, 2.80. And there you see uh, 2.8 is 0 0.997. If it's 2.87, then go, la. go to, where is it? 2.87, and then just, just cross-check there. Okay, ladies? All right. Okay, good. So let's return to our question. Okay, that is the Z test, one tail test. Okay, the test one thing test. <laughs> what does the probability for the probability for probability is for you to double check is is it H1 except or H0 except? Okay, and in this case it is less than the one that we have chosen, which is H0 will be rejected. Now that 0 0.00256, why do we minus one again? Because one refers to 100. It's a ratio. But one it refers to one hundred because we want to know uh um uh and you mm -hmm. also see because it's on the right side also can uh technically when we do this we want to know what is h one or h zero except the next is that zero point zero zero two five six if you change it to a hundred percent which is zero point two let's say which is the probability right the probability of all the samples to be less than 200 PSI is at 0.2%. Is it small or big? It's small. So the probability will show to you, ah, it's okay lah, because the probability is so small. What number? 0.2%. So this is what the probability is for lah. But in engineering, to me lah, to me, uh, you can use this, but in exam, I didn't put this because if I put too much calculation like this, it will impact the uh, score, right? A majority of our, uh, na the nature of our, our program is evaluation. So if we concentrate on calculate calculation, then, then it, it, it's not balanced between calculation and evaluation. So that's why I didn't really uh, ask what is the probability of this, whatever the case is, okay? But it is a good uh, info or good knowledge. Okay, then. Let's not waste time. Question two. Now, let's see. Let's see if you know already the answer. Well. Is this a Z test or is this a T test? So let's read. The viscosity of a liquid detergent is supposed uh, to be uh, 800 centistokes. Okay, 800 centistokes. Okay, I'm looking at the last one. Uh, at 225 degrees Celsius, a random sample of 16 batches of detergent is collected. How many? Just 16. And the average viscosity is 812. So the average viscosity is already known, which is more than the average, average stokes required, which is 800. What is the average viscosity? 812. Where is the mu? 800, which is more, right? Okay. Next, suppose we know that the standard deviation is 25 centi stokes and do the following. So again, this is a z-test because the standard deviation is given 25. Now, in the, uh, this should be a z-test. Yes, Chinese, this should be a z-test. So in this question, is A, B, C, D is guided. Okay, so this is just for tutorial purpose. In your test and assignment, it won't be like this, but it will not be like this. It is more, I will discuss it more when time comes, okay, when time comes. So the first one is, what is our hypothesis? And B, if we use 0 0.05, what are your conclusion? And C, the key value is asked, because this is tutorial again, and D is 95% confidence interval. What is it 95%? Because your alpha is 5%. Okay, alpha is your rejection zone, right? Alpha is your rejection zone, and the acceptance zone will be 95%. That is why it is 95%. Any question? All right, so here you can see that construct 95% confidence interval of the mean breaking strength. Uh, it's supposed to be the, uh, what do you call it? The viscosity, yeah? the viscosity. Now, let's just straight ahead discuss the answer. Now, this is another way to write hypothesis. 
Uh, you can write it this way. I, give, I will give you marks as well. But my question is, is this a one-tail test or is this a two-tail test? Hypothesis here is given. Mu is equal to 800. And alternative is mu equals to not 800. Can anyone write on the chat room? Is this a one-tail test or two-tail? Okay, I have an answer already. Uh, one, two, okay. Uh, Chen Jun says two-tail, Chen Li says two-tails. Why is it a two-tail test? Is it because you watched the video already? The YouTube one. Okay, correct, yeah? This is a two-tail test. Uh, what is the logic? Okay, logic is alternative is 800. Uh, sorry, the null hypothesis is 800. The alternative is not 800. So if you plot it inside the graph, let me increase the size there. That is our 800. So where in this distribution chart is not 800? Of course, it will be this region and it will be this region, left and right. And therefore, it is a two-tier test. Okay? But I hope in the exam, I prefer you guys will write that. Uh, mu1 equals to mu2 and mu1 equals to mu2. But why this question use 800? Because the mu is already given. You have an anchor already. You know what's the original mu, which is 800. So you may write something like this. But in the exam, uh, you don't know uh, what is the mu between two groups? Where does it lies? Okay, because the two groups need to be calculated. In this case, there's only one. How many uh, samples? 16. Now, since this is a two-tail test, but the mu is already known, and therefore the equation is sort of like one-tail test because we know what's mu already. And you only have 16 samples to compare with the known mu. And that is why it is written as if it is a one-tail test because the mu is known. Okay, so it is 1.92. How far is 5? So here it is 1.96. So let's go to the table, statistic table, I mean. Go to the first page. This is a two-tail test at 5%. So when it's a two-tail test, you need to divide alpha into 2. So 5 divided by 2 will be 2.5. So take a look at the second line there. The lower limit right is a 2.5% tail is 1.96. Now the answer was positive 1.92 just now. So it comes from the right side from the graph. Okay, here. So this region 1.96. Okay, 1.96. Is it 9.96? Okay, now. Do note, okay, you can see that the middle is 800, okay, and that one is 1.96, so it's not logic. Why is it 800 there? And then suddenly something number smaller is on the right side. No, uh, this is just the, uh, I would say, the, the, uh, the border region, if you are basing on the uh, Z table distribution, right? That border line is for the Z0 population. It is not for the 800. Okay, our 800 is 1.92, right? 1.92. So here, it lies just a little bit towards 1.96, right? Just a little bit. So therefore, we do not reject. You see, do not reject that. No marks. So how to get marks? Do not reject. What? Because I don't know what you're rejecting. So I just put there, do not reject, because somebody will just copy that. Do not reject H0. And please continue. Uh, and therefore, or you can also write uh, H0 is accepted. And therefore, the, uh, what was the question again? The sample of detergent is, is, is average at 100 centistoks. So, uh, what, uh, what, what is the importance of this one? Let's say the centistoks uh, means that we need to sell this to the customer, if it's more than eight, uh, 800 centis to we have produced 100,000 batches of detergent. Oh, should I put it out of the market? No, don't have to. And therefore, this, that 16 sample collected, even though it is more than 800 centis to you can just sell it to the customer because of the simplicity of the statistics. 
Got it? All right. The p value is just like what I explained just now. Uh, this is two tilted, so it's times two. Lah. So uh, you get that 0 0.0274 from the one minus uh, 0 0.05 and go back to the uh, Z table. This time we need to times two because it's a two tail test. So the probability of the, um, uh, the detergent uh, is, is, is uh, 5%, which is quite high, quite high. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that the probability of this detergent to be 870 stokes is, is 5%. Is it quite high? Not really quite high, right? Smaller, still okay. Right? If you want to, that's why, this, this is why uh, uh, my predicament in the beginning. Uh, what does that mean for engineering? Right, is the probability higher, better? No, right? Uh, so I didn't see it importance in engineering, uh, uh, what we call principle. Like the probability. Uh, so I just take it out uh, from uh, the questions, but the knowledge is there for you to apply. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the, uh, the samples engineering wise before we go to the uh, confidence interval. Yeah. Uh, so we want the uh, detergent to have uh, viscosity at, eight, at around 800 centistokes. However, uh, the number there, Z0, is 1.92, which is close to 1.96. That means it is almost to be rejected, right? The hypothesis is almost to be rejected. Is this important in engineering? Yes, because, because somehow the batches of the one that we, the detergent that come uh, on that day manage to uh, be safe. I mean, like, they manage to be accepted. Like, if, if 800 centistokes is an acceptance margin of acceptance in the company. Okay. Um, here it is close to 1.96. So it should be a concern whoever produced this detergent. You need to go back to the to the to the uh, manufacturing line and see what is actually going on here. For example, if we continue to read this, you might see some trend. Maybe in the next in the past three months, it is. Uh, maybe 0 0.6. And suddenly, after six months, this increasing to 1.92. So that means somehow the, the, the formula is, is changed or unlook or overlook. So these are the things that you need to write it down as an engineer because we're using statistics to answer engineering question. Okay, is it worry? Yes, because 0 0.04 right, it will be 1.96 and it will be rejected. So therefore, <clears throat> it is quite a concern. Got it? Okay. So we are going to play uh, these this, this words uh, in engineering statistics. Okay, next, confidence interval. By uh, confidence interval, this is as if it's a one thing test. You can see that <clears throat> there's only y, there's only one y which is 812, which is already given. 1.96 is your alpha. There you see that Z is divided by two. It doesn't mean that um, you need to divide 1.96 into two, right? No, no. It just tell you that this is a two tier test. And that is your uh, standard deviation. And that is your sample, right? 25 and four. On the left hand side, it is labeled uh, as negative. On the right hand side, it is labeled as positive. Left and right is the same number, same um, formula. The, the difference are, is just the negative and positive uh, notation there. And as you can see, the left hand side is 799.78, the right hand side is 824.82. So, what is confidence interval for again? The two purpose. One is to accept or reject H0. What was our mu? Is 800. Is 800 exists between these two numbers? So left is 799, right is 824. Is 800 centistokes exists between these two numbers? Yes or no? Right in the channel. Yes, good. If yes, then H0 is accepted. Number one. 
Number two, now you can see the range of the, I would say the range now. I would say the predicted range, right? Predicted range between the lesser centistokes and the highest centistokes available. The number can be different. I know if you take sample of 110, right? It would not be 799. It might be 788. It might be 850. So what does this confidence tell you? Confidence center will tell you. You can see that these numbers is going to be more than 800 if nobody check it because the least is already 799.75 only a few more points it will be 800 right so is it worrying for the company if it is then you can write it down the answer okay so this is the use of confidence interval two of two lah for engineering lah. i think there's a there's a lot of um, uh, uses for confidence interval lah, but i apply these two for your know, engineering uh, statistics Okay, done. Question number two. Any question? Let me erase. Okay, so if you just simply create the items, do not fulfill the criteria. Okay, uh, Yong So. Uh, I don't, and you need to clarify. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. If engineer accidentally create the items, do not fulfill the criteria. You mean he cheats? That means uh, uh, he changed the number, is it? To save the company, let's say. Hmm. I, think I, I think that's what I understand. Uh, yeah, you can say if seriously, you can apply, if not, just gonna warning. So it depends. Lah. This, this is depending with the, between the HR of the company and as well as the CEO. Right. Uh, so I believe it is, it is, more on your uh, integrity, uh, integrity, integrity. If it's involving safety, uh, then in another story, yeah? if it's involving safety, then life might be at stake. Uh, so do you want to save life? Do you want to save your company? Or do you want to save yourself? <laughs> okay. Somehow, okay, I do not, yeah. Uh, let's say you do this statistic analysis, blah, blah. Statistic analysis doesn't really, okay, yeah. Statistic analysis doesn't really uh, merit in engineering uh, uh, research, yeah. What does statistic analysis help is to shortcut, for example, just 16 samples, you'll get the results of tireless work. True. Uh, if not, you, you need to take uh, how many samples? Uh, 10. Uh, that is engineering. So from here, you know that it is not safe. Then you go back to engineering formula, blah, 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 work it out, and you get lah. There, okay, then you can say 0 0.274 because this is uh, 5%, right? And then your, your number is this one, right? Go back to your Z table just now, find 1.9. And then go up 0 0.02 and you find your number there. Okay, check it out. Okay, let's go to question three. What's the time? 10.44. Question three. Question three. Is it a Z test? Is it a T test? That's right. The shelf life of carbonated beverage is of interest. 10 bottles are randomly selected and tested. And the following results are obtained. Okay, uh, pause. Change each one as for some PB times two one, and one minus. So the first one minus is to 100, 100 uh, in ratio because it says that Tesla minus whatever you get from the table. And then you get your probability. And you need to times two when this is a two tail test. So technically you double the, the probability uh, because it comes from the left and right. Uh. So when it's two tail test, times two that's technically what they do okay and lim uh answer the same thing okay let's go back to the question we will a we would like to demonstrate if the mean shall life exceed 120 days okay now it says it's 120 days and exceed is it a one thing test set appropriate hypothesis for investigating investigating this claim 
D alpha is now changed, not pi, it's just 1% or 0 0.01. Uh, P value again you ask, and now it is 99% confidence interval. Why is it 99%? Because your alpha is 0 0.01. 100 minus 0 0.01, you get 99%. Okay? All right. So here we have the numbers of beverage. What beverage? Doesn't matter, uh, Sprite, Coca Cola, what? So we just take it from the shelf, just 10 of them, and see if they are exceeding 120 days. By right, look at the numbers there. Some of them is 108, some of them are 124, some of them is 163, some of them is 159. So technically, this is, this is exceeding 120 days. So why bother? It doesn't matter. You see? It doesn't matter. If by this, you see that, oh, it's more than 120 days, so it's okay, 120 days can. But because of this, is a statistics class, please don't answer that in your answer script. Please do appropriate statistical analysis, yeah? Now, this is a Z-test, T-test. Okay, I'll show you already. It's a T-test because variance and slash or standard deviation is not given. Okay, it's not given. Oh, by the way, let me check if I'm still recording. Okay, uh, I mean, maybe you can just can check in your Zoom there. Is it still recording? Because when you use, comp okay, good. Because I didn't have the uh, signal. Okay, good. It's still recording. Now, uh, 120 days. Let me increase the size there. Set up appropriate hypothesis. So your mu, uh, so H0 is mu equals to 120. And H1 is mu equals to 120 at all. So this is a one pill test. Okay, we want to know if the kind of beverage is more than one pill test. Give me a moment, yeah? Okay. Right. okay, where is it again? So this is the one to test. Next, uh, hypothesis alpha. So here, y bar s squared. So let's see. Uh, let's go to our formula. Formula. So I'm not going to calculate this for you here. Um, maybe you just go to uh, the uh, equations. And let's see. For t test, we have this, right? And inside it, you have that, right? And that sp is from here. And you also have s1 and s2, and that s comes from this equation. Okay. So when you start doing your T test is going to be longer. Now, uh, you can see that firstly, you need to do this one. How many groups do you have just now? Just one, right? 10 numbers, 10 samples, just one group. And therefore, your so you only have one S squared. And this S squared is your variance. Okay, I see some question there, but I'm going to continue this one first before I go to the chat room. Okay. Okay. All right. So our Y bar, what you need to do is from that 10 samples, you divide by 10 and you get your Y bar or your, your average. That Y I there is the samples. Right, is the samples number and then divide by n minus one. So let's do this. Just go back to this. Okay, so y bar was all this. Right, find the average. Right, divide by ten, and then. Right, so what you need to do for s squared is the first number. Is Okay, look at the screen, it's 108. Second number is 124 and 124. Okay, so what you will do is, okay, give me a moment, yeah?
All right. Okay. I will be just now. Uh, okay, then. So our number, first number was 1.108. So what you need to do in your exam or in your test, you can write it as squared in the bracket like this. 108 minus 131. What? Yes, sir. One, one, three, one square plus one, two, four minus one, three, one square, right? Plus. So the you have ten numbers. You have to do it ten times. So in the exam, you can write this whole bunch of numbers, but I will allow you to do a dot, dot, dot. Dot and plus, you can take the last number there. 139, yeah? Can you see that? 139. 139. So, I put it right here. 139 minus 131 squared. And this whole thing, right, is 10 minus 1. And therefore, it is 3438 minus 9, and you get 382. So, note, yeah, Z test is short. It's a quick calculation. For T test, it's going to be longer. If you have 40 samples, nah, the question say have a 40 samples, then it is 40 numbers minus the average square plus next number minus the average square plus T. So, note that for T test, is a longer calculation, especially on the variance side. If you have two groups, then you need to do two, uh, two, uh, two sets. Uh. Okay, and from there, you find the standard deviation, 19.54. Okay, and from there, you can put in your uh, T and you get 1.78. Okay, so that is how you get your T test. So it is a bit longer to do. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 1.78, we need to compare it with the statistic table, right? We need to compare with the statistic table. So, this is uh, uh, 1%, right? 1%. And what else? Uh, here you can see, you can see that T0.01 and comma 9, there's a comma, lana, comma, comma 9. So, what does this mean? Uh, you must find your T border at 1%. And nine, what is nine? Nine is your degree of freedom. 10 minus one, which is nine. Let's go to the statistic table. So we are going to go to the second page, right? 1%, is it one tail or two tail? It's one tail test, right? It's a one tail test. So we are going to use that one. Hey, sorry, this one. One tail test. Okay, you see the highlight there? Okay, uh, one third test. Uh, degree of freedom? Nine. So, nine. So, nine. So, cross check them. Two point eight two one. So, let me zoom out. So, you can see I'm using one to the test one percent at nine degrees of freedom. It is 2.821. So I believe the answer was correct just now. Let's go back here. 2.821. And this number, right, you can see 1.78 is less than 2.821. So if we put it inside the graphic here. So here we have... So our borderline was 2821, which is here, 2821, and our 1.7 is inside. All right. Oh. Okay, it's inside. Therefore, H0 should not be rejected. Do not reject H0. Please don't reject H0. Do not accept H1. You can write this. What does that mean? That means all this kind of beverage is less than 120 days. Magic. 
that is what statistic tells you. Although the 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 base that it is put on the shelf is more than 150 days, statistic tells you no, it's not. It is what it is a uh, less than uh, 120 days. Lah. Now, my question. Oh, okay, your question first. In the chat room. Uh, it's the latest one. Yee Hong. If it's not equal sign, then it's still the test. Yes. Because if not just you work on the Yes, you are correct. Yee okay, let's go back to the question. Okay, so you, you know uh, why is it H0 except? Okay, even though that the cans of beverage is more than 120 days, that is this says no, it's not. However, uh, this is this is the tricky part. Do you realize what is the alpha? Alpha was 0.01%. What's the, that what does that mean? It means that your distribution chart. A, this is the mean. So I'll use the green for five, 10 percent. 10 percent, yeah. The blue is five percent, and the red is one percent. So as you go reducing your alpha, you're opening this distribution chart bigger and bigger, allowing more data, just like the matrix to rain down and fill in the distribution chart. Okay, the closer the alpha, the smaller data that can come in, the higher, oh, sorry, the bigger the alpha, smaller data that can come in, uh, the smaller number of alpha, sorry, yeah. the bigger number of alpha, less data come in, the smaller number of alpha, more data can come in, just like a gate. Right, again, okay. you open it bigger, so more data can come in. More things that you can accept. You make it smaller, lesser things that you can accept. And you ask, sir, so because most scans in the T test are under the rejection zone, we can accept it. Yes. And most scans in the T test under the rejection zone, so we can accept it. Most scan lies in the acceptance zone. Therefore, you accept it. Accept H1. Sorry, accept H0. Okay. You see that our borderline 1% here, the red color one, was changing to red. 2.821. Was it 821? 821, yes. Yes, 2.21. So where is 1.76? It is inside the red gates. Okay, it is inside the red gates. That means you are almost accepting anything. Okay, let's go for the, the p-value. Now, you can see the p-value there is 0 0.054. How do we get this? Certain types of calculator, especially statistic calculator, allows you to get your p-value. You can also use a website to find the p-value calculator. You can use MATLAB to get your p-value. Yes. But for the nature of your um, uh, calculator, it's not a statistic calculator. What we can do is... You can see that your T uh, borderline is 2.821, right? 2.821. Go up, you can see that one till test is 1%, right? You can see my highlight. Now I change the highlight to green. Take one afterwards. Okay, right? So take the green one. So therefore, the probability of this case, whatever case, you, this one is a, the beverage case, beverage case is between 1% and 0.5%. That's the only way in t-test to know what's the probability. So that is why, again, I take out the probability from the question assessment because what's the point? So however, if you want to know what is the probability of the cancer beverage exceeding 120 days, this is between 1% and 0.5%. So the question was 0, 0.054 or 5%, uh, right? 0.5%. So it's between that number. Okay. Uh, so how do you get again P is 0.054 using a calculator? 
Okie dokie. Uh, last one. Construct 99% confidence interval. Uh, so put in all the values there and you can see that the, the minimum, which is not always true, but it's, it's predicted and projected. Like the least will be 113 and the most is 148. As you can see, some of the answers or some of the can was 15 something, right? So this is not an absolute value. It just tells you that if, if H0 is accepted, yes, because 120 is between 113 and 148. Therefore, H0 is accepted. Number two, this is sort of the range of um, beverage cans that you might encounter in the shelf. Okay. Any question before we go to the next? The next one, I might skip a few, a few lah, but... Um, I would like to discuss on the alpha, right? So you can see now alpha, how did you obtain the p-value again? The p-value 0 0.054 is from the calculator. But from the chart is just between between. So you can see it was 0 0.054, which is uh, you take it from 1% and 0.5%. So in between these two numbers. Right? 0.5%. Okay, let's talk about alpha. In the exam, I might not give you what is your alpha, right? I might not give you what is your alpha. But your alpha must answer the question. What is the objective of this question? The objective of this, of this question is for you to see if the beverage is more than 120 days. If you want it to be more than 120 days, please tell me in the chat room which hypothesis you need to accept. Again, the objective of this question is to find out if the beverage can is exceeding 120 days. Which hypothesis do you need to check or do you need to accept? In the chat room, please. H0 or H1? Your son says H1. Now, in the event where I don't give you any alpha, you need to choose alpha as best as you can to accept that hypothesis. Then, in the event or wherever, whenever I didn't give you any alpha, you need to choose alpha that suits the objective. The objective is to choose H1. Let's go to the statistic table. So we know that our uh, degree of freedom was 9. 10 samples minus 1 is 9. Let's go back to the statistic table. Let's clear this up. Okay, this is a one field test. I'm using the uh, green one. Also, let's, let's do a, a line first. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, so that's our borderline. So what alpha can we use? So we can see there's a lot of alpha there. 5, 10, 2.5, and 1. So the most popular is 10, 5, and 1. Right, 10, 5, and 1. Since this is, since this is a two-tail test, there's no 10. So you can have 5, maybe you can choose 1, maybe you can choose 0 0.1. Okay, so let's choose these three numbers. The first one is 1.833. Maybe not really. Let's get the idea. 1.833 are ah, nice. Then it is 2.821, which is the one from the question. And 0.1%, which is 99% acceptance, right? Almost everything. 4.297. Our number was, was 1.78. Again, our number, uh, T0, 1.78. So I'm going to write it down. In any case of this alpha, right, you can see 5%, 1%, and 0.1% on your screen there. Will it be possible if you want to be accepted? Anyone can write on the chat room. Again. The P0 is 1.78. These are the chosen alpha. If I didn't give any alpha, right? Uh, these are the possible chosen alpha. 
can H1 be accepted? So Yo Song says in the chat room, no. Good. All right. There's no way H0, uh, sorry, H1 can be accepted. And therefore, it is a surefire to reject the objective. With these results, right, there's no way the cancer on the reach is to exceed 120 days, even though you have 168 days, 158 days. So what's the logic? So how many cans of beverage you see on the supermarket? Plus 99 supermarket, KK Mart, whatever mart there are is around the world. Uh, I mean, like Malaysia or around the world. Just 10 samples. No, right? Maybe billions of cans. So what does this tell you? Statistics just simplify the calculation and also represent the all millions of cans of beverage out there. All right? Uh, okay. Is it a surefire result? No, again. How to make it surefire? Have more samples, right? More than just 10 samples. So this is when T test, or uh, sorry, this is when alpha is not given. Okay? Doesn't matter for Z or T, or in the future is F, it's the same. If it's not given, you have to give the alpha, right? You have to give the alpha and test is the object. What is the objective of the question? Okay, so let's go back to the question four. Eleven seven. Okay. Question four. So now in question four, you have two groups. So let's just read it uh, quickly. Two machines used for filling plastic bottles with a net volume of 16 ounces. The filling process can be assumed to be normal and they are given standard deviation. One machine is 0 0.015, another machine is 0 0.018. So therefore, this is a set test. The quality engineering department suspect that both machines fill at the same net volume. That means these machines fill more or less 16 ounces at the same time. Okay, whether or not the volume is 16 ounces, that means what does it mean? Huh? This means that maybe if it's 15 or maybe if you set 16 ounces, then it fills around 16 ounces. If you want to change the machine to fill in at 15 ounces, 12 ounces, you will perform similarly. That's what it means here. Yeah? An experiment is performed by taking random samples from the output of each machine. And we have machine one and machine two. So from here, you know what was the drill. Okay, so what is alpha? Alpha is given 5%. Now, our hypothesis has changed. No more numbers there. It is mu1 equals to mu2. Why? Because you have two groups. And you don't know which groups is which direction in the uh, uh, distribution chart. That is why you write it this way. Okay? So 5%, that means you need to do for both of the groups. Y bar, there's a uh, sigma there, and also your samples number. Now you can combine them and you get 1.35, all right? Since this is a 5%, yeah. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, okay, the 5%, and this is a two-tail test, divide by two, you get 1.96, and 1.35 is less than 1.96, and do not reject. Is it correct answer? Wrong. The correct answer is do not reject what? Do not reject H0 because H0 is accepted. So either you write do not reject H0, do not accept H0, reject H1 is acceptable. But please write in the explanation. What does it mean by do not reject H0? It means both machines are performing similarly, whatever answers it's given. Okay. For this one, uh, the significant level start, blah, blah, blah. okay, the p value, you know how to find p value already. Uh, I'm going to shift to confidence interval. Confidence interval have two purposes one, to accept and reject H0, similar to the, to the table, and number two, find the range. And here you can see uh, the final answer is negative 0 0.0045. And the uh, our maximum is 0 0.0245. Zero in between? Yes, zero is in between. Since mu1 and mu2 is the same, so zero 
uh, same number minus same uh, same number minus that will be zero lah. So h zero is accepted, confirm. So one says h zero, another say h zero. So it's confirmed. Number two, the difference. So as you can see in the tables here, the numbers is sixteen and sometimes it's fifteen point nine five, fifteen point nine seven. So it fluctuates. So we can predict what is the difference between the two machines. So as you can see, the first machine is mu one, the second machine is mu two. So sometimes mu one have a lesser lesser ounces than mu two, around negative zero point zero four five ounces. Sometimes machine one is filling more than mu two, around zero point zero two four five ounces. <laughs> If these are the margins of acceptance, let's say. Uh, Uh, because of the strict condition of uh, our customer, All right? Or because we want to really, really be cost effective, right? Uh, cost efficient, whatever you want to coin it or name it, we want the margin of our uh, difference is around zero point zero 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 two ounces, which is not there. Is it there? So small. That means your margin of error is very strict. So from there, you can see that although zero is accepted, but your numbers is not there, or maybe it's bad. Zero point zero 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 is bad. Yes, so it's it's okay. Let's say I will. Uh, let's say you want it to be uh, more than that or less than that. So you know you know uh, what's the difference, yeah? more or less. Okay, so you know what's the range of the difference between the two machines. Any question? But I think you get the idea now, right? So very good. So five and six practically the same. Practically the same. Uh, this one is variance. So I'll skip. Uh, this one is no variance. No, this is a t test. Okay, your test or assignment looks something like this. It has a story. Okay, we are finishing here. Yeah? We are almost to finish. You have a story because with each story, I will can come up with an objective, and from that objective, I can come up with question. Of course, you can see that the answers here are all in spreadsheet format because technically, I have a spreadsheet that has a t test, a z test. How many samples number is already there? All I need to do is just to change the numbers. I get whatever results, and I just put in the exam. Okay, and you can see here we have forty samples for both machines. CNC one and CNC CNC two, and therefore this will take some time for you to answer, since you need to minus one by one, right? Uh, so technically, this is sort of a test that I like to ask in the test. Two machines, CNC one, CNC two, is to produce iPhone six unibody aluminium. So iPhone six is many many years ago, five or six years ago. That's when the time I wrote this question. The quality engineering department suspect that both machines to complete the process at different net time in seconds. An experiment is performed by taking the daily batch of random samples, right? And the reading of set of seconds finishing is is given in these two groups. What does that mean? Can you write down in your chat in the chat room? Is it H zero or H one need to be accepted? Read the question. Uh, so if you can answer this correctly, then you are good to go for test for any kind of engineering statistic question. Do you need to choose H one or do you need to choose H zero? Anyone? Right or wrong doesn't matter. If it's wrong, then you know what is right. Uh, if it's right, then you're good. It's okay, still good. No one want to answer. Um, <laughs> that's a good answer. Okay, again, eh? Look at make statistics for both machines. Yes, you need to make statistics on both machines. Okay, okay. It's my weekend. Okay, give me a moment, guys.
Okay, now let's read this exact fish one. Fish one, because both are different except fish one. Excellent. There is and changing. Yes, except fish one. So, so let's see how this question works. First, I give a story. Two machines produce iPhone body. That's the story. I can come up with any uh, some, something else. Lah, but that's the story. Then the objective. The quality engineer they always suspect that both machines complete differently at different times. And therefore, the departments think that these two machines are not performing at the same rate. Is it important for a manufacturing process? Yes. If you're producing things at different rates, then one machine is producing slower than the other one. If you want to meet customer demands, we need to finish it fast, right? So we must, we must finish it very fast at the same time. All production go 100%. Okay? Uh, so that is the objective. So you need to choose H1 to be accepted. Does it tell you what kind of statistic analysis? Wait again. Blah, 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 machine one, machine two, and just ask you, okay, alpha is 5%, acceptance level is 95%, and then start appropriate statistical analysis. Is it fact test? Is it a t-test? Variance are not given, and the divisions are not given, then this is a fact test. Sorry, <laughs> this is a t-test, okay? So you must know how to define Z test and T test. And next is ANOVA 1, ANOVA 2, Taguchi, and Full Factory. So they have their own characteristics. So I will not name this. I will not name them. This is the T test. Conduct a T test. No, eh? this is how I'm going to test you guys in the uh, assessment. Okay? You see uh, two groups. Now, when you see two groups, it's going to be either Z or T. Next. Do you see any various or standard deviation and slash or? No, and that's a t-test. How about if you see CNC1, CNC2, CNC3, and it's not t-test and z-test anymore. We we'll call this as ANOVA, one way which is next week. Lah. Okay, so I'm going to show to you how to differentiate between this, all these statistic analysis. If you do this as z-test, most probably the H the uh, uh, alpha will be correct, the hypothesis will be correct, but the whole calculation are all wrong. So mark will be given which one is correct. H0 except H1 except, is it correct based on this answer scheme? Yes, correct. But sometimes I give some, some CN mark, lah. The CN mark or PT mark or working mark, so maybe one or two, but not going to be more than five. So please make sure you know what is statistic analysis that you are looking at. So this is a t test, okay? And then find the range between the two machines. So I will use a bracket there confidence interval. However, in the exam, I will not write anything, any clue. Maybe the question, find the range of difference between the two machines. So any difference. So in the exam, you have to know that that is your confidence interval. Okay, so let's go to the answer. Now, here you have... Here you have the answer in tables. Now, because of the nature of this time around, right? Uh, and then the exam will be sort of a take-home assignment. I allow you guys to use computer software to answer your statistic analysis. If you want to write it down using hand, screenshot, or make it a PDF, just go ahead and do so. But if you want to choose spreadsheets, just like this, go ahead and do so. Just make sure you code it correctly. Lah. As you can see, I'm just going to increase this. Section a bit, and our T0 is 1.29285637, which you can actually simplify it 1.29. Okay, uh, at T5, because it's only 5%, is 2.024. Uh, so therefore, you need to accept H0. As you can see, I didn't write any <coughs> evaluation there. What you're looking at in your screen right now will marry you half marks. Uh, to get past, right? So if, if, if this is a 20 uh, marks question, whenever you reach H0 in your T0 calculation and you refer to the table and arrive at H0 accept, and then you do the confidence interval and H0 accept, typically you will get 10 or 12 uh, marks. 
and the rest 10, uh, 8 marks to 10 marks to complete 20 marks, right? Are the evaluation. Okay. So technically, if you manage to answer the uh, calculation correctly, you pass that question. So if you have a lot of calculation in the exam, right? So technically, you have to pass and pass and pass and pass and pass. Majority of you will get C. Okay. Uh, so if you don't know how to calculate, if you miss, oh, this is a Z test. Oh, wrong. It's a T test. Uh, so you know what? But, miss, but the evaluation still counts. Lah. Okay. Uh, so this is how I craft my exam assessment questions. That's it. That is the end of my uh, uh, presentation. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to stop recording because uh, I'm going to publish this in the uh, 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 as a replacement.